Jenny's Kitchen. So today I'm going to be making a dish that everybody's been asking for. Calabacitas con carnita de puerco. So where are my calabacitas? <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. So you're going to be needing a pork shoulder picnic roast. Uh, I have the Mexican calabacita. I like to use both if I can't find this one, but it's pretty much a preference. So whatever you can find in the grocery store, you go ahead and use it. I'm going to be using some garlic, tomato, and some onion, and I'll be bringing out the rest of the ingredients later. So I'm going to start by cutting my pork, and since this one has the bone, pretty much what you do is just kind of look, just start in the middle, and then just start finding your way around that bone. I already cut a piece out of that big uh, roast and I'm going to start cutting my little pieces and just try to get the most out of the fat, most fat out of the piece of meat just because um, you don't want all this excess fat. If you can save some meat like I do, just try. Just try to save as much as you can and uh, just cut them in little pieces like this. See, this is the, egg, the skin that I took off from the uh, pork roast. I'm going to save it for chicharrones later. And so you just start chopping away. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. It's totally up to you. Uh, I like to leave them a little, not too small, not too big, just bite size. And just start cutting. As you can see, there's still a lot of meat into this bone, so I'm going to try and get as much as I can. And uh, I actually like to cook my bone in my meat because the bone is what gives it the flavor. You see, there's a lot of meat. As you can see, I'm still working on this bone because I like to cook my meat with my bones in there. And uh, I try to get, you see this? There's still a lot of meat right here. So I try to get everything as much as possible. All right, so your bone should look like this. If you guys know me, you guys already know that I love bones. I'll be putting the liquid shortening that I get at Costco. Again, this is liquid manteca. And what I like to do before I cut my veggies, I like to brown my bone. These are all the little bones that I was able to get out. So guys, I already washed my hands. I'm gonna start cutting my veggies. And since uh, I have that big bone that I wanted to saute before I start adding all the meat, then this is when I wanna start cutting my veggies. So you wanna cut the ends. And look at these little cute calabacitas that I found at this Mexican store. They're really cute. So this is the Mexican squash. Again, if you don't have this or can't find it, just get the zucchini. I do it with both. And believe me, they taste the same. Why? Wow. I see no difference. But I guess people do. So it's pretty much preference again. So I cut these. And you want to dice them. This is what I do. I try to cut them just slightly smaller than what I cut uh, my meat, just so they can start cooking um, almost evenly. the bottom and uh, they, it won't really cook. So now you want to add all this meat 
and brown it. Tomato. Cooking should be fun, guys. It's it should it's really easy. Once you know what to do and when your ingredients, it should be really fun. Shouldn't be boring at all, especially if you have your wine. This is why I guess I enjoy cooking because I can take a little sip of wine once in a while. Just one glass. because you gotta be really careful. You gotta make sure that the pork meat is well done. Um, kind of like carnitas. So right now it's still in that cooking stage with the water and the little vapor. So it, let me let me cover it again. Let's keep on cooking it. So I'm done cutting all my tomato. Now I'm gonna start cutting my, ooh, look at this little piece. Oh yeah, it's cut. Okay, so you want to now start cutting your onion. And again, at this point, your meat is still cooking. So you want to make sure that those carnitas are well fried because that's what gives it the flavor. And when you put that bone in there, believe it or not, you're going to you're gonna see a difference. All right, so let me get another board. Hold on. Okay, so I switched boards because I wanted to make sure that when I'm cutting my uh, garlic and my onion, it's not wet from the tomato. The tomato juice, uh, it you know, it just gets all over the place. So I want to make sure that I don't get my my uh, onion and the garlic wet. So you peel it, and that's probably the fastest way, uh, the trick that I learned from all these chefs, from all these videos that I watch too. And um, I just chop, 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 chop my, my garlic. And again, this doesn't have to be minced because you're just gonna fry it with your carnitas, your pork meat. So again, for the people that don't know what I'm doing, this is uh, Mexican squash with pork meat that is pretty much fried and it's a really, really famous Mexican dish that uh, if you've been around Mexicans, you've had it. And if you're, if you're Mexican and you've never had it, then I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> there you go, you chop your, your garlic. And now you want to chop your onion. So this is how I cut my onion. This is probably the fastest way for me. I just peel it and it's ready. Super fast. Start from the middle, hold it, maybe you can, if you can see it this way. Everybody asks me what this is, and this is liquid shortening that I get from Costco. And it says manteca, it's a huge box, and I'll be showing you guys a picture later. So, right now, I have around two tablespoons, probably a little bit more. And uh, you don't want your, your, um, your oil to be too hot. This is two cups, and you immediately want to start stir frying it because this is not the red rice. This is not the, the Mexican red rice. This is just the white rice. You throw in some garlic, some onion, and let me get that. So don't brown your rice because you're not making the Mexican red rice. You're making the white rice. Add two cups of water and add two more cups. 
So again, for every two cups of rice, you want four cups of water or your chicken broth. Here, I'm just gonna, I'm so used to using my chicken bouillon that uh, it's okay to use the water. Everybody tells me I mispronounce it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. We call it Nor Suiza chicken bouillon. Whatever, the, whatever, whenever you see that little chicken, <laughs> that's what you want to get. There's a tomato flavor, there's a chicken flavor, there is a shrimp flavor and beef flavor. But I like to use the chicken flavor a lot. So I'm going to be using two of these spoonfuls, just like that. And mix really well. And now it's time to add the corn. Let me go get it the corn in a can and make sure that you drain all the water from it. I kind of pre-drained it earlier and then that's when you throw it, all the corn in there. You mix it so it could be evenly and then you cover for a good 25 to 30 minutes. Do not uncover it until it's done. Now we're going to be checking on our meat. This has been cooking for a good 30 minutes. And let me grab my spoon really quick. So this one's already pretty cooked. So now we have to wait until all this juice dries up and it starts frying. Definitely you wanna start adding your salt. Okay guys, so it should start looking like this. Um, if you want to add a little bit of your manteca or oil, uh, you can do so just to get it browner, just a little faster. Um, this bone is really on, in my way, so I'm just gonna take it out. So it can start frying just a little faster. So I think I'm going to add some more uh, shortening or manteca. So I want to make sure that they get that really nice fry. Kind of like this, like carnitas. So did you guys see how I, when I cut it in the beginning, they didn't look as big. But once you cook the meat, it starts shrinking. So this is why I don't cut it too, too small. Okay, so we're going to continue frying check on our carnitas. Let's see. Oh, look how pretty that looks. So that's the sizzle that you want to hear. And the more fry, like chicharron, that's what you want. Because once you start adding your salsa del pato, then they start getting soggy. And if you can see all the way in the bottom, you see all that goodness? That's what you want. When I add my onions and my garlic, and just saute them just a little bit before I add my calabacita. And then last, I add my tomato. So I just wanna make sure that we infuse those flavors before I start adding uh, the calabacita and the wet ingredient, which is the tomato, because that's pretty juicy. So I don't want to ruin that uh, caramelize on my onions. You see how pretty that is? Let me get it. Look how pretty. All right, so let me add my calabacita. There you go. Ooh. Okay. And then just slowly, I think I need a bigger pot. <laughs> but uh, in reality, once they start cooking, then they start shrinking so just in the beginning this is when i'm just careful cover it with all that little oil or all that goodness i should say i wish you guys could smell the house it smells so good with the onion the garlic the fried pork it smells really good look how pretty that is Okay, so now you add the tomato. There's little big pieces, but that's okay. And you just mix. Mix, mix, mix. This 
this is what I'm using as my tomato sauce, which is a salsa del pato. This is a little different. There's two kinds. Don't confuse it with the red one. The red one is the enchilada sauce, and this is the salsa del pato, and it's just a little bit more spicy, and this is what I use. So now we want to open it. And for the amount of carnitas that I'm making, I'm going to use two of, the can two of these cans. All right. And then you want some oregano. And you pour both. You add a little bit of water too. Oh, this is too much. Dried oregano. Like that. And get some water. I'll be right back. My measurements are the same can. I just pour them with water and that's what I use. If I think I need more water, then I add some more. But for now, this is what I want. And you just mix. Mix really well. You see that water? You might want to add a little more, but the veggies releases water, so I'm gonna check in a bit. And now I'm going to cover. This has been cooking for 30 minutes, and look how pretty that, that, that turned out. So now we gotta taste it. Look, you see, it doesn't stick. Look at that guys, perfect. If you do not uncover your lid while it's cooking, it's gonna cook evenly. Okay, my wine bowl, let me put it back inside, but I wish I could bite this. <laughs> let me put it back. Make sure that it boils. You're gonna want to boil this uh, with your bone for a good 20 minutes or while the zucchini is already um, nicely cooked. And cook it again. So let me try it if uh, I want to, I like to try it if it's too salty or if it needs more. And it just needs a little bit more. Mm. So I'm going to add some of the chicken bouillon just to give it more flavor. You mix. And then let's cover. All right, let's check on our calabacitas. And oh my gosh, look, they're so ready. So five minutes before you want to serve them, uh, well, this is what I do. I like to add some cilantro and just uh, let it cook for five minutes because the cilantro really doesn't need uh, that much cooking, just for that extra flavor. So come back in five minutes. Okay, so after five minutes, it should look like this. And, oh my gosh, it looks so good. Look at this bone. <laughs> I love the big bones. Mmm, this looks delicious. Look at this. I like to serve mine with a lot of juice, but it's really up to you. A little bit of rice. And some corn. Look at that, beautiful. Guys, this is it. Look how beautiful and easy that was. I like to eat mine with crema. Don't forget the chile, this is chile serrano. All right guys, I hope you guys like my video. Don't forget to give me that subscribe and that like. See you guys soon.